from Winter Haven, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning, defending, undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up. Yeah. Both guys have come out throwing very hard punches to begin the fight. But so far in the first round, Berto is busier, and down goes Berto on a hard left hand by Ortiz and Michael Ortega is not going to rule it a knockdown. He's going to say that Berto tripped over Ortiz's foot. Ortega immediately made the ruling. He's a good referee who's a former fighter and sees pretty well. Of a blow landing anywhere above the waist, and it did. Even if it was a grazing blow, he blocked. He wouldn't have went down there had I been hit. Berto staggered again. Straight left hand by Ortiz. And Berto does go down in the corner this time. So now Ortiz has the credit for the knockdown that he didn't get the first time around. Hey, we've got Andre Berto has a whole new respect right. for Victor Ortiz's right, punching go. power. I find myself surprised by that. I'm stunned. Berto paces Ortiz with a big right hand. Ortiz walks through it. Keeps throwing. Berto blocking the shot. Ortiz is trying to get rid of him right here. Let's see if Berto has his composure back. Yeah, he's very explosive. And he still has a lot, a lot of fire in him. Back in uh, January, like the fireworks we saw in the first round here. Good uppercut by Berto. He's another southpaw who is basically a right-hander. Berto has a look of concern in his eyes, unlike anything we've seen during his professional career. The way he did. All, all of our team punches are very... There's the right hand shot. again, and now Berto has a knockdown. That's an official knockdown, but it, it was probably due to balance, but still it's an official knockdown. Ortiz glove touched the canvas. It was clearly the result of the punch. And Berto's landing his straight right hand, and you've already seen the damage it can do. What a start. Break, break, let him out, let him out. You wait to see if a boxing match will emerge from the slugfest, which has taken place so far. But they're back to slugging again. Ortiz wasn't hurt that bad when he got up as compared to the way Berto was when he went down. Uppercut lands for Ortiz. Berto go, holding on. Ortiz is fighting like a young man possessed. Berto hasn't yet seen the uppercut coming. And painted twice. Now he lands the right hand again. Hard right hand by Berto. Another big hook by Ortiz inside. Another straight left hand lands for Ortiz. Victor Ortiz took it to Andre Berto laying on the ropes. I mean, I agree with you. I don't know why he kept motioning him in. Because every time Berto would motion for Ortiz to come in, Ortiz would wrap him with a good shot. I will not be denied. And that's the way he's fighting. Two more hard shots. Another right hook for Ortiz. Another uppercut. And he's tired. Big left hand by Berto. Ortiz walked right through it. There you see the legs. That's why he's in the ropes. Because of the legs. Left hand back. that he could stand toe to toe with him. Trade another pair of big shots. Good hard right hook inside by Ortiz. Ortiz still physically dominant into the fifth round. Ortiz testing Berto's legs once again. Fighting in the junior welterweight division, and right now. It looks every bit to be true. Peculiar story of winding up spending two weeks of a vacation can be connected to this slow start for him, or is it just Ortiz? I think it's Ortiz. Ortiz is fighting with such determination in New York Golden Gloves. Just making the distinction for you. <laughs> Down goes Ortiz on a perfect right hand shot by Berto. Second knockdown of the fight for Berto. And you can Six, feel the fight seven, changing perceptibly eight, in this right. round. Hard right hand by Berto. His uppercut is good, too. Now Ortiz is going to... Oh, my God! Through. Unbelievable. What a fight. George Foreman and Ron Lyle stand aside. 
and we've you got an amazing slugfest in Connecticut. And you can see Mike Ortega getting in position to stop the fight. And then Berto goes down. Unbelievable. If there was an American fighter in the house. Oh my God. <laughs> we want to be great men in this sport. You're entitled to get a little excited. Thank you. Does anybody think we've seen the last knockdown in this fight? <laughs> Not I. <laughs> because neither one is as fresh and their legs aren't as good as they were earlier. If he loses this fight, and for any fight that he's won. Berto, as you mentioned, had a history of these kind of tumultuous fights in the amateur. Of course, in the amateurs, you have headgear on. But he's not going to lay back the way he did in the Peterson fight. Now, let's see if he gets penalized. Next time he's behind there, I'm going to take a point. You understand that? Okay. Ortega not says next time, not this Go time. Set. Let him out. And uh, he's got to try to land that right hand. Six rounds to three, Victor Ortiz. There's no question. Uh, he, he needs one big shot. He's really got to do something spectacular. 86, 83. Oh, yes. come on. There's the shot. Michael Ortega discerns that Ortiz hit Berto in the back of the head, and now he's going to take a point, having had a point taken away. This, no doubt, is the motivation to try to make the round an even round. Now that you're giving away a point. Only behind Pacquiao and Mayweather in the welterweight division. And that this is the first Looks fight. Looks like there's a new welterweight in town, and his name is Victor Ortiz. They're going right, they're going right together. If he could just move forward and then pull back for a minute and have Berto off balance. And wound up against the ropes, trying to help, or trying to get the ropes to help him stand up. And then Ortiz is having his way again. The next Mexican-American who would be a big box office attraction. It's taken him this long to come back, I think, is the welterweight champion of the WBC. Question is, can he hold it for one more round? He has created for himself a style which is about risk. And he just got hit with two big shots by Andre Berto, or right in the left. Another big left hand for Ortiz to try to rescue his position in the welterweight division. Step back. Step back. Take time. 115 to 110. 114 to 112. 114 to 111. For your winner, by unanimous decision, and new. WBC welterweight champion of the world, vicious Victor Ortiz. And across the way, Razor Ruddick, the man who gave Mike Tyson two difficult bouts. Become very cautious so they don't open up, but Ruddick was in any kind of a major fight several years ago, it was against Lennox Lewis. Nice jab by Morrison. I was going to remind people of the nice uppercut by Ruddick. Oh, there goes Morrison! He leaned in and got whacked with an uppercut. Will Morrison box? Is there room to box? Ruddick will try to put him away here, loading up with everything. Hey, Morrison may have to pound his way out of this. In fact, he's shown very little. There's Morrison with the uppercut. Two in before against Joe Hip, against Carl Truth Williams, he's done it. Well, based on the early results to this point, Reddick could not parlay his knockdown. And it wasn't in a situation that Morrison had left himself open. Hey. Uh, Morrison was busy backing off and was happy about to launch into it. The hook blocked by Morrison. Reddick has done a nice defensive job. Good combinations by Morrison. A lot of punches. There's the uppercut landing, but this time Morrison absorbs the punch. But he still paid for it. Oh, he hurt Reddick with a right uppercut. Razor Ruddick got rocked by the same punch that knocked Morrison down. Lift it. Give him a standing eight count. That's bizarre. Because of the gloves on the top of the rope yeah. being used as a support. I guess. It just seemed like Morrison had a big advantage there that they took away from him. 
Tommy Morrison hurts Ruddick, but that counts as a knockdown would. See of Morrison knocking him out. The only reason why I was critical there of Ron Lipton, who, by the way, is a very, very good referee. So round two, it's Morrison's turn to hurt Ruddick. Oh, big hook by Ruddick, and he lands an uppercut. <laughs> Maybe he wants to clear his head. <laughs> Another right uppercut. Halfway through round three, Morrison trying to use that jab. Jorge Gonzalez will get it on in a week or so in Las Vegas. Even though we're only in the third round, I now say, folks, who's going to get tired? Because both men have shown some signs right. of it. Good left hook at the end of that round by Razor Ruddick. Underneath Razor Ruddick, and then go to the body as he does there. He has had virtually no effective punches on the outside, but there is the jab of Ruddick. To a punch so that he can work his way out of it. As he did in the first round. Boy, he took some punishment. Now, a moment ago, Ruddick had Tommy Morrison right in front of him and did not fire the uppercut. Now he gets it in. Nice body shots by Morrison. Morrison has the movement in his arsenal. Ruddick really does it. Morrison should use it. Good uppercut from Morrison. Comes back to the hook. He's got Ruddick hurt. He hurt him with the left hook. Razor Ruddick is hurt now. Good body combinations by Morrison. But Ruddick is talking to him. This fight is exactly what it was supposed to be. Two guys needing an opportunity with strong offensive skills, not the best chin. Throw some pretty potent body punches on the last round of two. Now he is forcing Morrison back. That uppercut may have stunned Morrison. Tommy Morrison got hurt by the right hand. He couldn't bring his jab back. Ruddick is going after him. And this one has proved to be quite interesting. And it ain't over yet. Good right hand. Ruddick throwing more right hands than we are accustomed to seeing him throw. Morris is dabbing his eye. I don't know if he's cut over his left eye. It doesn't look like it. There's the Morrison attack to the body and then the uppercut to the head. Neither one is confident that they would get the decision or that the fight will go all the way. But Ruddick landing some big shots here in this round. Just this with that uppercut. His hooks have been very good. And then throw a combination. He's unable to do that. Big hook by Ruddick. But Morrison is still there. Big round for Razor Ruddick. Morrison with a hook at the bell, and Ruddick with a hook at the bell. We head into round six. It is scheduled for 12. Good. Ruddick goes to the body here. Good hook. Ruddick has fought once in the last 15 months. There's a hook by Ruddick, and it may have hurt Morrison. Big Standing eight here. Now, this a standing eight. knockdown. That counts as a knockdown. And Ron Lipton told us before the fight, he would like to see the standing eight not in effect here. The three knockdown rules not in effect because of flash knockdown. He may be forced to stop this, yet both fighters look like they can keep going. Morrison is nailing him, though. But Ruddick is still holding on. He needs to buy about 10 more seconds, and it's a long one. He will not do it. Oh, my, it's over. Toward the end of the round, Ron Lipton says, I have seen enough. Tommy Morrison comes back to win with a TKO here in the sixth round. Now, take a good look at Razor Ruddick, if we can focus on him. That is not the look of a fighter who should not be fighting anymore in this bout. But the three knockdown rule comes up to bite him. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, come out banging at the bell. Didn't do much in the early rounds, might have cost him as well. They can both hit, they can both take a punch. The battle of the jabs might be important in setting up the rest of it. A good right hand from Foch as well, who started fast here. Foch is timing his job quite well. He's got a full blooded yet, yeah, but it's landing down. The second one, but there, Frotch again, just slightly ahead. Forget that, though. 
last three months or so. Good right hand again from Frotch. I don't think Kessler sees it coming. He's oh, a good shot from, from Frotch. Perfect start from Frotch. Confidence in everything he does. The first fight, how far away he could get a good punch there from Kessler, though. Sometimes Frotch's boxing skills are a bit underrated. We saw that against Arthur Abraham. So he's going to have to let combinations go. Good right hand from Frotch. As well, Kessler has only had 13 rounds of action in the last three years, and he was hit by that right hand by the Temple as well. Just a bit frustrated, the Dane, I think, early on here. Frotch is after him again here. He's nailed him with a couple. With another huge right hand. He struggled, his feet are unsteady. This is a huge round for Frotch. Kessler said he came. They've got a plan, him and Jimmy, Jimmy Montoya. That is the big difference. In this fight tonight, this Carl Frosch is jumped. And there's a little bit of blood around Kessler's face as well, and he walked onto a left hand, landing it, and then getting away out of range again. Good footwork. That was a big jab from Frosch there, that was so... Kessler may be too, from eating this, he wants to get the body shot in close range, but at the moment, Frosch is keeping him away. As well, when the mood takes him, Frosch and still super motivated, as if there are another big fight, and Bigman in right hand, and again, he's buzzed up by that, Kessler, that shot, looked off balance when it landed. Well, is it throwing single punches, he's coming off second best, he's going to have to put them together. Good job there for him. Kessler, the job there he goes. That good left hook there, yeah, but there's improvement uh, in that's Kessler's work. That's more like it from Kessler, that's more like what we were saying, he is getting that little bit closer. The, the, the boxing style that Frotch has brought into the fight here, he's beginning now to cope with it and deal with it. He had to come up with something special, and he's trying to do that here. Yeah, good job again. Kessler slipping punches now that he wasn't doing earlier. Big improvement in Kessler in that round. So Frotch has been sent out to, to dominate with the jab again, but it won't be so easy now. Do something about it, and there's a left hook, a good shot from Kessler. See, he's just pushing that jab out now. That's not the jab he was throwing in the first couple of rounds. Big jab from Kessler. Kessler starting to find some answers, and starting that left hook was a good shot as well. But certainly for oh. big shots from Kessler. Set the sweat spraying from Frotch's head. It was a big right hand, and this fellow can hit as well. You don't want to be hit by too many of those. Close round, this one. Good speed, and it catches Frotch to the body as well. I mean, sometimes Frotch's attacks look a little bit crude, but they're very effective. He got three hard minutes and three, and finishes around Kessler with the last word. He wants to snap it out the way he was doing earlier. That's good stuff. And a right hand straight away, and then a left as well. Kessler took advantage as Frotch just wandered back into action after that little gap in the action. Terrific four-punch combination from the Dane. He does look dangerous but here and there from Kessler. Mainly the jab still from Frotch, who tries to set up another attack. And earlier, he's found the answer. Oh, these are vicious punches from Kessler again. I've got a level first three to Frotch. The fourth was debatable. Mind you, but these are scoring punches. And they're keeping Kessler... Needs a round when he just stops them all a little bit. Just does not allow Kessler to do anything effectively. This is good stuff, not taking anything. Set that right hand. Right as you said that bit. Point taken, Jim. Until then, that had been the strong left hook that just sent Kessler looking a bit open, didn't it? And boxing very, very smoothly here. Frotch in this round, dominating it again with the jab. Back to what we were saying, really, in rounds one, two, and three. Defensive boxing is good as well. Good stuff there from Frotch. Yeah, three-punch combination, body then head to finish it off. And another right hand. Now this is like what we were watching in the last three rounds in Herning, Denmark, three years ago. Another massive right from Frotch. These pouches, though, somehow just keep bouncing off these guys. It's only a question. Oh, good left hook from Frotch. Frotch is not caring about the defence, he's not both his hands out there. Oh, this is crazy. Beautiful point. 
Foch from Foch, pick that well. And look at Kessler here with a show of bravado. Come on, man, he says. You want a bit more of it? Foch has saved something for the later rounds. He's not doing it now. Great right hand from him. And the fire of it, Kessler, not a lot coming back. Right, left. Bad moments leads for the Dane. Less coming back. Oh, the right hand was a great shot from Kessler, mind you. Another little snarl of defiance from him. Frost walks through the right hand as though the punch missed. Amazing turn he has. Another good right hand. He's looking like Carl Frost. This is what oh. has been broken in this one. Something, but this might be the decisive round. But look at Kessler come on strong late in the session. There's the between these two yet again well Kessler, Kessler has tried to do the way he normally does and it hasn't worked Flutch has come through his best punches is preventing him from setting a good couple of good punches off there Flutch just wants a little bit more snap in the jab if he's going to throw it to a little bit behind it but he did look on the edge of maybe breaking Kessler's will a little in that last session well, this is the taste that Kessler wants. The right hand from Kessler there on the counter. Kessler's what he needed. It was far too hard for him in the previous round. This is clever stuff. Trainer Jimmy Montoya wanted a bit more movement from Kessler. He's getting hit a bit too much. Oh, typical. Well, it's getting the punches off again. The walk around in the left. Right through it, that must be breaking Kessler's heart. A hint of the inside of the glove about the last punch, but it was a flashy combination. Sort of thing the judges like, but that comes left hand from Foch in the middle of all that. Taking it away from Kessler whenever he chooses. Nice little combination there from Kessler, but not on his heels. Again, the jab setting up the attack. For Froch. It's been the key to this whole fight, really, so far tonight. Right from the word go. Getting into the home stretch of this now. And once Kessler sees the finishing take, that might just lift him a little bit, you know, Jim. The three rounds right off the, the wheel. But he's still looking straight. His legs are looking terrifically strong. The little left hook on the inside from Mikel Kessler. Nice left hook, wasn't it? Oh, lovely right hand there from Carl Frost. Can't afford to take another one. He looks totally unmarked as well, or nearly. Frost looked remarkably. What a terrific performance from Carl Frost. Lovely countering right there from Kessel. It's hurt. Frost, they bust him out. Kessel knows it. Follows him with four, five, six punches. Oh, recovering. There's a damage as well for Frost. He's cut by the left eye in that a little change in the plot line again here's Frosch's answer to all of that typical Carl Frosch response the final three minutes of another magnificent contest between Carl Frosch and Mikhail Kessler they touch gloves for three more minutes it's still a mighty battle between them for supremacy noise reverberating around this arena everything that Kessler has thrown at him does it again I wonder if Frosch is thinking now his boxing brain's telling him I might need the knockout here away from home right hand was a good looking shot so Frosch took that set that up like he has so much else just a little bit more ragged from Frosch there but he got out of that left hand didn't he right cross as well he's coming up for a moment what a tremendous fight again! These punches have a far bigger effect than they had ever in the fight. There was another huge right hand from Fletch. Timothy last round, what a finish of Fletch has! Thunderous action! Fletch! Pounding up big punches, Kessler's hand in the closing second. Huge finish for Fletch! You could hardly hear the bell at the end of that. 118 to 110. 116 to 112, 115 to 113.